I have Zoom recording. All right. Oi. Who's hosting? Me, you. We never discuss this stuff before we start. We don't discuss it anymore. No. You can you host this one. I'm kind of fine. All right. Let's do this. Welcome, legends. What's going on, everyone? Hey, what's going on? I, I don't know. I was trying to go for like an like 80s cartoon kind of voice at the end there. Shazam! Did it work? Do you think it worked? It worked. Like All right, fair enough. Club. Fair enough. Yeah. It, it worked, yeah. All right, so, yeah, welcome, everybody. And everybody that's watching this about like seven weeks later on YouTube, because I've sure. noticed that that's how far behind we are. <laughs> Very true. Like, yeah, I, at least I really noticed this kind of strip, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're uh, we're still on uh, mental health uh, mental health awareness month. Uh, I don't know about you. I didn't get any questions. I was hoping to see if anybody wanted to share with us and things like that. I did not. I did uh, not. Yeah, we didn't get anything. So we're just gonna continue this train of going the way we've been going. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, what's new with you, Frank? In all reality, that's kind of a, a factual question because like normally we kind of keep it with each other really well, but lately we've kind of been in our own thing, and not a bad thing. It's just we've been doing our own thing for a while. Like a you do you kind of thing, you know. Yeah. But basically, it's been good. Life's good, you know. Pretty good so far, you know. Spending time with myself, which is really damn good, you know. Me, myself, and I. Usually that kind of thing because, I mean, sometimes it, you gotta spend it with other people. But for me, I gotta spend some time for myself, you know. And we'll talk about that on a later note. But yeah, what's new what i'm vaping on basically is titan with tm24 pro as usual with some vaptasia, vaptasia. the strawberry one you know it's really good stuff and next i have a goon on the warlock hammer of course hell yeah with some rectum balls rectum balls always good healing power action Next is never, it will never go out of my rotation. It's the Law Dime with an Axial on top of it and some Honian Acid Sibida on it. Sibida. 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 Because we don't want Clown's thing to be taken away again. So, you know, we won't say it. And then next, my, my kind of like a new new last week, it's the. The Mr. Just Right one edition of the Unicorn Red Neural with yeah. a Cosmonaut on top of it with a shoddy cap. Dude, okay. Like, first impressions on the shoddy cap, it's really flavorful. There's only one downside to it. If you get your coils a little to con contact with each other, mm -hmm. or if it's not too space, rest assured you're going to you're kind of going to like drink some juice kind of thing. So you gotta be careful on the shoddy cap. Yeah. But other than that, flavor is really good. Really awesome to, you know, vape this one with the cosmonaut. And of course, smacks, lick it, represent. So you what's going on with you, clown? What's new? Uh, life, man. Just living life. Uh very excited about all that and type of situations. Um uh, mm -hmm. On the what I'm vaping on, I have. Let me see how many do I have in front of me. Don't tell I me have, seventeen. You're not Jared. I'm getting there. Come on. Eleven. We're we're cutting it off at eleven on at least on table setups that I'm vaping on at the moment. So that's gonna take twenty minutes off the off that show's time. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it down to to the uh, Omi's three is what I'm calling it nowadays because. Omies, we we seriously we all have way so much we have so much gear going all at once. Yep. That we cut it down to three maximum. If you do less than that, that's fine. Nobody cares. But three maximum. So we're gonna go with the uh, bunker RDA, which that review should be out by the time this this thing comes out on Vape Radio. Hmm. And uh, in that, I have Super Serial from my own line. Yeah. Cause Ooh I was like, you know what? I haven't vaped Super Serial in a while, and I tried it out in a different setup. Really wasn't liking it, and I'm really digging it in this bunker with a .15 coil. Yep. 
It's really nice. I'll be honest. Other than uh, fruit basket, all the juices in my line are more meant to be vaped warmer. They're yep. more of a warmer vape. Other than fruit basket, fruit basket is a, I think like ninety watts, and you're pushing it at that point. Anything beyond that, you're kind of like going a little too hot. Because if I look at it this way, like rectum balls mm -hmm. on a single coil, it's not much. What you call it? It's not much creamy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It doesn't bring out the creaminess to it. But when you vape it out on a Mac, it's super duper creamy. So yeah. just saying. Yeah. Well, because, okay, like in here I had a 0.2 coil. And I, I decided to wrap like a two and a half millimeter inner diameter for it. Yep. And uh, just to see how, how much of a difference it made. And at 0.15, it's amazing. And mm -hmm. I had it on a 0.3 not too long ago. And that was kind of eh. So it's kind of how that went. All right, so where do we continue this uh this train of going? Uh, yeah, next we're gonna go with the with the uh, recoil rebel. Uh, unicorn, three and one, Mister nice. Ride edition, loving this Everyone's thing. Everyone's rocking this thing. It's really good. It's dude. a good. It's a good fantastic. mod. It's good flavor. It hits hard. Yep. Super duper fantastic. Speaking of good flavor, I got deep cuts dragon shake. Oh yeah. Ooh wee. Ooh wee! Mostly because I ran out of the juice I had in there, so that's kind of how that went. And then lastly, we're gonna go with the uh, Project X on top of the double barrel. I'm still deciding what mod to get for this guy, because this isn't its proper mod. The double barrel belongs with the Dead Rabbit RTA. Dead Rabbit. Yep. And uh, in that setup, I have a uh, vanilla bourbon custard from Johnny Copper. So Ooh. Yeah, those are uh, my what I've been vaping section there baby 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 we're gonna, we're gonna stick to those three you'll see me pick up more things like makes me laugh because i'll say only like three things but i'm actually vaping like a ton of different things so it just turns into one of those weird things hell yeah so for news and advocacy what's in the news glam uh i have no idea <laughs> dude uh i i've taken a break in all reality from from that i I am feeling a little overwhelmed, a little bit depressed in that sense, because everything just seems so doom and gloom at the moment mm. that I just kind of need a step back in all reality. And I'm trying to find some news articles here, at least okay. from our, our standard before, ones. Before you find anything. Yeah. So one of my local vape shops, Nimbus 9 Surrey, you know, one of the, one of the least kind of like known shops because it's a little bit it's accessible in their location but sometimes people don't know about nimbus 9 Surrey. Yeah. but here's the thing a few weeks ago and this is posted on their page by the way which is nimbus 9 Surrey. if anyone wants to check this out that's facebook.com slash nimbus 9 Surrey. it's a few weeks ago health canada sent out a notice of intent in regards to a new set of regulations for the vaping industry. The Minister of Health needs to hear from the vapors. The most impactful strategy is to have these postcards filled out by vapors saying vaping help you quit smoking and specify or and rather specifying rather the flavors of e liquid or e or vape liquid you do or you use to quit. So Health Canada has issued a request for consultation on further restrictions on vaping. So one, possible prohibiting the manufacture and, sa and sales of certain types of flavors. Two, restriction on nicotine strength. Three, restriction on device based on a specific design features. So yeah. TLDR, I don't know what it means, but Health Canada wants to take flavored e-liquids away from vapors and putting restrictions on next trends and devices. And then they say that the postcards are available at their locations, both in Abbotsford and in Surrey. So this is just the thing, right? For the longest time, like, you know that, you know, U.S. has been battling flavor bans. 
and they couldn't strength. And they're sort of child-friendly devices. Yeah. And, you know, usually when, let's say, for example, when you have a neighbor, right? And you have your own house. When your neighbor usually, and it's springtime, just as an FYI, it's a springtime in Canada and as well as U.S. When it's spring cleaning time and you see your neighbor cleaning away the garden and almost part of your garden too, it influences you to also do the same thing. Yeah. Which is basically clean up the clean up your garden. Basically that is what's happening within Canada. It's not obviously that we are influenced by the US, but now because people could see that, oh, that's what the US is doing. Aha, uh-huh, we're Canada. So we have more of an excuse to do that too because we're Canada. Yeah. And that being said, okay, restrictions on flavors and as Clown specifically walks out on me while I'm speaking is you know, we already had a battle with this, right? We already had that I quit smoking by using this flavor or I, or no, the Jennifer Burger Coleman thing where it's like I smoke for blank years and then i you know started vaping or the the i quit by smoking signs yeah and basically what happened is we've already told the world that flavors help you stop smoking whether it's a winter melon you know juice or a watermelon or banana mango a tart a custard whatever whatever flavor actually that you help or that help you quit smoking. Flavors is really a vital part. And it's really just like exhausting now to fight flavor bands when people don't make any sense. Like, is there any, you know, is there any, whatchamacallit, harmful additives to the flavors when FDA already approved of flavors? I don't know, dude. Like, when you combine them into like one bottle, Everything's FDA approved, but the bottle isn't. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really tiring nowadays. Oh, trust me. That's what I said. Like I was saying, uh, I, it's one of those things I'm like, I'm getting really fed up of hearing about everything that's going on. And just like, and it's just anytime we feel like we're getting even slightly ahead, it just seems to go backwards a lot. And uh, uh, like I was looking up stuff and I'm on Veep on Magazine right now. And um you know our uh, friend Angela Garrity. Yeah, exactly. And uh, here in Texas, and I mean, we we knew it was coming. We knew whether they had said anything publicly or not. We knew something was going to come up. And for the, for a while, we've only been hearing about uh, Tobacco Twenty One, and now they're finally trying to push uh, a, a tax on vaping. Wow. Uh, and here's the thing. HB 413 was originally filed on March of this year. However, it appears to have undergone changes from the original version. Either way, it puts vaping business in truly an injudious situation. The verbiage and bill analysis of uh, HB 413, while CSHB 413 may differ from the original in minor and non-substance ways following summarizes the substance the substantial differences between the introduced and committee sub- substitute version of the bill substitute includes e-cigarettes among products to which the sales tax uh, t- sales and use tax apply and changes the sales and use tax uh rates from five cents per each milliliter or fractional part of a milliliter of vaping products to 10% of the sales price of e-cigarettes or vapor products. The substitute changes that definition of vape products. The substitute changes that found to each comptroller is required to deposit a proceed of taxes from a, re- a general revenue found in to the foundation school fund. Substitute revises certain uh, reporting and re- record keeping requirements A link to the uh, the bill analysis. Uh, there are some like verbiage in there that I'm a little bit like 
I can agree with it, but I'm not sure kind of thing. Uh, there's, uh, here's like some of the things like, uh, I was just looking at when it comes to criminal justice, how it'll change things. It is the committee opinion that this bill does not expressively create a criminal offense, increasing the punishment. Can't hear me. No. No. All right. Let me see. All right, so nobody can see me right now, but this is just because I don't want to send him two videos and all that kind of situation. So Frank will get to see this later. But you guys can still hear me because that's the kind of kind of cool kid I am. Oh, okay, I need the link again. Where the hell's the link? Ah. Uh. And I totally forgot to like, uh, let's see, open and zoom, open and zoom meetings. Let's see if it'll take me to it. There it is. Hello. There he is. Yay. All right. So, yeah, uh, as I was saying, uh, like, I didn't stop the recording, so you just letting you know. Yeah, boy. What the hell? Ding dong. There it is. All right. So, as I was saying on the other one, um, so I was saying on the, on the news thing, uh, there are a lot of things that just seem a little bit off uh, a couple of things that don't really make sense. And a couple that I can agree with, like there is uh, the person requires the person's employees to attend a comptroller approved seller training program. Yes. I agree with that, but I want I to know, I want to know a full outline of what kind of training, what do they mean by training? Yeah. You know, is it within reason when it comes to vaping and things like that or is it just going to be some hoopla that makes no effing sense and just ends up screwing the company anyways? Yeah, because at, at a certain level, training is good, but what do they need to teach you? Yeah. That's one of the biggest things is I'm all for, th I'm all for the training. Yeah. But we got to know what the curriculum of sorts or what – does it entail for the companies or the stores that are going to be trained? Exactly. That's one. Two, what what would be or because if there's training, usually there's a cost, right? Yeah. So who will cover the cost? And three, when there's training, usually there's girls outside. Um, <laughs> no I'm kidding. When there's training, there would be. Now the crows are just going around, but. When there's training, usually there's people who will train, who will be speaking. There's a lot of things in that loophole that kind of like needs to be covered. Yeah. So that's one of the major things. But yeah, like taxes, dude, on vapor products. Sometimes, I don't know, dude, like it doesn't make sense at all because first of all, you think about it this way. It's going to be that this is the vape industry. And it's not that we're defying like tax or anything, but it, I just think it's unfair the way they tax it. Yes. Cause... You know, because sometimes it's like 95% tax. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, no. And here's the thing it's not even like that it's a 95% tax. It's like once you get into like taxating e liquid. Mm -hmm. you start taxing it at like say you know 20 cents a milliliter if it's a 120 bottle that that adds up after a while that starts adding up and nobody's people already complain about what e-liquid costs now let yep. alone what the taxes included and the thing is that then they want to blame either the manufacturer the vape shop or what have you but none of that falls on us it falls on our states they're the ones yep. that are taxating this shit not us mm-hmm and even further still, they, they're trying to slap it on as a syntax when in reality, this is harm reduction. So how can you tell us that it's a syntax? That just makes no sense whatsoever. Let, and let's, let's pick up, 
speak of this syntax specifically like syn if anyone doesn't know syntax it's like the extra tax that people impose on those when let's say for example it's a borderline dangerous thing so let's say for example drinking alcohol has a syntax alcohol is syntax cigarettes are syntax you know I know about cannabis if they have like syntax yet. Uh there I, I think Colorado they have a uh they have a cannabis tax. Yep. And uh what's one of those weird things of like, yeah, they have a tax on it. And they actually and that's another one, like it depends on every state because that those are state taxes. Yep. Some states actually put the money towards what they promise they're going to and Colorado within that first year after legalizing, uh they were able to like renew every uh renovate almost every school in their state because yep. they made their money back really fast and i think that was like an amazing thing that they were able to do but not every state's going to do that some states are a lot more shadier and they use their money to pay off debts they use their money to pay off this and that and none of it actually goes to what they promise they're going to use it for mm -hmm. that being said it's like it's been like a talk talk of the town kind of thing but Let's say, for example, taxes get gets implemented, you know, and hopefully not. But when taxes gets implemented, what do you think would be one of the biggest effects on it? Not just on the market, but on not just on the vapor side of things, but on the market vaping industry itself, you know. So if let's say it has more tax. First things first, since since the company's paying the cost, the company would need to pay more to their to the employees. Because not just that, or not necessarily, but think about it as an extra cost, right? You're upgrading that bottle, the price of the bottle, which means you're actually taxing extra costs. So now if you add that extra cost, your revenue would actually decrease afterwards if taxing happens you need to pull out that extra you need to pull up extra revenue right yep now bottles would also increase pricing again because of these companies wanting one more extra dollar mm -hmm. now let's say for example right now i don't know how much a 60 mil would cost usually it would go around i think six around 20 dollars Per 60 mil, think about it if the tax implements. So let's say, for example, doing the math, right? Let's just do, let's say, a 95% tax on, uh, or 90% tax on a bottle. So that's $18 more. So that's $38. But the company needs another pay, cut, needs to, whatchamacallit, get the revenue from the consumers. Of course, they're going to pass that. So they're going to increase another price. So by, let's say, for example, I don't know, maybe 12 more dollars. So think about it that way. A six mil would almost cost 50 bucks, yeah. possibly, mm -hmm. just because of a 95% tax. Yeah. That's really unfair for both companies and the vapor. Yeah. That's basically just the gist of what could happen. Mm hmm and that's, again that's where like a lot of this gets uh a lot of people don't understand how this stuff works because they don't put into thought every last bit of it people just want to look at it as well you're just being assholes and you're charging us all this money it's like a lot of the time it tends to be taxes it tends to be overhead it tends to be a lot of things and not many people want to put into that into account on what your supplier might have, what your supplier might charge, or even like some suppliers actually have like a set price list and you can't go below that price list. Yep. And if you do, they will potentially drop you as one of their sellers and you don't, you want to have a good relationship with your suppliers like you do with your customers. Mm -hmm. It's a back and forth that you like me as a shop, I play middleman here, right? I get stuff from my distros, I get stuff from my suppliers, and then I pass it on to my customers. And 
you know, a lot of it just doesn't fall on me. I, I'll be honest, like I'm a dropship company. A lot of it falls onto what uh, my suppliers have, not to what I have, you know? Yep. There's only so much of it I can control. Mm -hmm. That being said, got to talk about mental health now. Yep. So we thought last week, right? We dived down a bit. Mm -hmm. on what we were talking about basically mental health month so we talked about for example how we cope out on depression because one of our main viewers which is slim daddy vapes asked us a question and now we're going to talk about some drawings that we've seen and in the internet which is about how it describes mental health issues mm -hmm. which you could see on HighExistence.com, and then the title is 18 Mental Illness Drawings. Okay, so that's one of the biggest things. And I think we've already discussed social anxiety disorder. Yeah, we, we went into full uh, description of that one. And then right now, we're going to talk a, a little bit about the other stuff, but also depression, because... This one is is really big, not just for me and Clown, but specifically for the people who are in the industry. Because think about this way and how HighExistence.com describes it. Okay. MDD, or Major Depressive Disorder, it, also known as depression, is a mental health, health disorder characterized by at least two weeks of low mood that present across most situations it is often accompanied by low self-esteem one two loss of interest in normally enjoyable activities low energy and pain without clear cause mm -hmm. so okay like and i'll explain this i like those symptoms a lot would apply to me for a couple of reasons why so low self and self esteem i'm kind of like the person who's who's really trying hard to do my best in an everyday basis so whatever i do i really try my best to you know pump up myself and do things you know mm -hmm. and the things that i would be proud of and other people would be proud yeah that being said sometimes there comes a point in your life and this happens like on a long basis, an on and off basis. Mm -hmm. Me being a guy that's having not really good self self esteem lately, I usually and I've noticed this on myself. I usually say sorry on a lot of things that I shouldn't, because of a low self esteem point. You know, like sometimes, like you're sorry that this happened, but mainly, you know, it's like you're overthinking it. But because you had low self-esteem, you had to say sorry for it. Or sometimes, let's say, for example, when you're in a relationship, what's going to happen is you're going to say sorry a lot because you're worried that sometimes this person thinks otherwise what on, what, on the things that you've done. But mainly, it's just you overthinking it, having an anxiety attack or a panic attack when you don't have to say sorry. Mm hmm loss of interest in normal enjoyable activities so let's say for example you like going outside right and it's for people it's pleasurable to like go outside go to the beach you know focusing on yourself and diving down on things that are really important to you but sometimes for me it comes to a point that loss of interest in normal normally enjoyable activities it comes to the time that I'll be honest with this. I enjoy being on Discord. Yeah. Whether it's the Vapes 2 Discord or the Go to Steroid Vape Discord or even like talking to Clown on Discord. But there comes a time always in my life that I'm really, I don't know, dude, like I'm comfortable with my box and being just myself. And I don't want to really like talk to people, even if I enjoy talking to pretty much almost everybody in the Discord group. So 
you know, those normal, enjoyable activities and even games, dude. Like, a lot of people don't know this, but I game a lot. Like, I I used to be like in a pro, in a pro team of League of Legends games. Yeah. From one back when I was in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. That being said, like I, I'll be honest, I haven't played League of Legends since two weeks or ago, I would say. And that's usually like my normal, enjoyable, you know, unwinding kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. And lastly, like the pain without clear cost. Like, I'll be honest, like if you see my elbow right now, it has like a real. I don't know, like usually my my elbow's really good. Like I feel good about my body and I don't know anything wrong as of the moment with my body right now. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I feel pain with my shoulders and elbows without knowing the reason why. Yeah. Even my hand. So like and for anyone who doesn't know, I I'm usually predominantly I use the right hand, but I I'd usually use either or. You know, I I type faster on my left, and I eat usually ha- eat on my left hand or eat you eat using my left hand. But usually, like I can't explain it, and I had to go through those long talks with my parents and my sister that this is what I'm coming with, and they've been really my support group with what I've been going through. Mm-hmm. So like that's one of the biggest things for me. And even after one, this one, insomnia. It's like, I'll be honest with you, like there is sometimes that I'm really like dead tired. Like, you know you're dead tired when you, you could like sleep almost all day. And I usually there was one point in my life that I sleep I kind of like slept for like 12 hours usually. And dude. I have a trouble of not falling asleep like other people. I have a trouble staying at, asleep. Yeah. So let's say, for example, even if I'm so dead tired, I could run on like three hours of sleep. And even if, let's say, for example, I'm sleeping, let's say, for example, I sleep usually around 10 to 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Usually there comes a time where... I wake up 2 p 2 a.m. actually, mm-hmm. and I have all this energy, and I don't know why. And I usually like really fall asleep sometimes daytime, specifically on the bus kind of thing. And I notice to myself too that I'm irritable. So, dude, I'm just describing like how. I am currently, actually. So, I don't know. How about you, dude? Uh, I know I've been taking over for the last 10 minutes. I know, you're good. Uh, When it comes to, like, major depressive disorder or simply known as depression, uh, the only one I can't uh, associate with is unexplicable pains. Yep. But other than that, um, yeah, dude, loss of interest, low uh, self-esteem. It's one of those weird things of... I as a teenager because like for me most of my issues kind of like stem around like the ages of i want to say six or seven all the way through about 23 uh yeah I, I dealt with a lot of shit and i i wasn't doing so good and i know that whole feeling loss of interest just not feeling like you care for a whole lot not even living it's one of those weird things you don't care to like clean yourself up you don't care to shower you don't care you just do things because you're supposed to, not because you want to. And it does really get really weird and awkward. Uh, like for me, uh, it's one of those weird ones. I was looking through these while you were talking and there was a couple that like for me, I've always thought like borderline personality disorder is something that has always eluded me. I always felt like there, there are some days where I'm myself, there are some days where I just don't feel like myself and there's just this uh like i know i hang i have huge major anger management issues and there are some days where i'm just full of anger and rage and i can't even explain the why behind it yep it just turns into this whole thing of i just want to beat the hell out of everybody in in sight and not even care fight me 
Yeah, pretty much. And there's just no reason behind it. I mean, uh, Saturday we went out to dinner with my in-laws and earlier in the day I we were at this one store and there was this person there and I was just getting aggravated with her because she was being a rude piece of shit. And my wife was like, you need to go outside and take a time out and chill out for a little bit. And what's it called? Uh, you know, and it still continued throughout the day. It was like the weirdest thing where I just didn't know what to what to do. And even like my wife looked at me and said, hey, what's happening? What's wrong with you today? And she's never actually had to deal with me in, in that type of situation. She knows me when I'm down. She knows me when I'm just kind of feeling like life can't really fully progress anymore. And but she's never actually known me in that sense of me just feeling angry and agitated at every last thing. So she got to like see and meet that person and I'm not really proud of it, not happy about it. And she just looked at me and she's like, I'm not mad at you. I'm just making sure you're OK, because I'd rather make sure you're fine than it turn into something bigger than it is. And I appreciate her for that. And again, that goes back to what we've spoken about before is finding somebody that will look at you, remind you that they love you and show you no judgment. Uh, yep. I feel that that is one of those major ones, even if it's a friend, if it's your spouse, if it's somebody you're in a deep relationship with, uh, if it's a friend, you know, I have like some friends that I really can't say we go back all the way to childhood, but we go back to like late high school because I mean, moving here in my late teens from Texas really threw things off on who I know and that kind of thing. And but I do have a buddy and like me and him are people that like if. I need somebody to get my back and I need somebody just to talk to. I could hit up the guy any day of any day, any time of the week and just be like, Hey, can we like hang out or talk or something? And we'll just seriously like play video games, bullshit for a while and I'll feel better. But it's just trying to have that system in place. You have to be able to trust somebody to not just go to the next guy telling all your shit to. And that's where it does become a little bit of a hassle. But once you get that in place and you know who you can trust and who you can be around, it's, uh, it, it helps a lot. It really does. Uh, like I was talking about like last time, I think I've spoken about this a couple of times in my mid 20s. I had a major life change and I started drinking a lot and I was just like in a huge path to self-destruction and like I even thought about committing myself to an institute because I just didn't know if I was going to make it for the next year. Yep. And, uh, you know, he was a guy that like he he's just like me. He has a huge personal space bubble. Trying to hug that guy is the funniest shit because he'll start swinging at you because he doesn't like being touched by people. Mm -hmm. And I'm the same way. I have like a really big uh, personal space issue. And. Uh, I remember one night it was like two in the morning. I was really wasted and uh, depression really took over and I just didn't even want to be here anymore. And I was going through full on panic attack and everything. And he seriously grabbed me and said, I'm not fucking letting go until you chill the fuck out. And he like hugged me and I he made sure I was OK until he let go. And it was one of those weird moments for me because I was like, this guy is my best friend. Like, sure. This guy, he has my back and I know it. So, like I said, it's one of those weird things of just trying to find those people that you can trust, you can talk to. Find, you know, it is one of those things of look for help. Don't don't think that you're alone. Don't think that you don't have anybody. Actually, go look for help. You know, there are so many avenues. There are so many places that are willing to help or do something for you. I know Wolf Bite Show is one of them. The Omis were a bunch of crazy dudes and do our own thing and this and that. But you could seriously hit up anybody from the Omis and one of them will most likely talk to you. I know Dan is one of those guys. Like Dan is very dad like he seriously comes off as like the father figure in the group. And, you know, we we all have our own personal demons we've dealt with. So it's not like we we don't understand. I mean, that's one thing that like at least in today's era is most people think that. You're just alone in these issues. No, everybody has issues and everybody's willing to work with yours. If just 
don't like it's one of those weird things of show some balance don't just be a complete constant because that does kind of wear thin on another human being because they have their own issues yeah but at the same time you know find somebody and like personally i don't care for the for the pill route but if that works for you hey more power to you yep you know because you would need that emotional support from other people let's admit that but Sometimes you can't, and I'm not saying this because, you know, this is just me, but I feel that most of the time, Mm -hmm. even if we say that you get emotional support, you don't actually become fully dependent on them. Yeah. Because that will arise the fact that, oh, like I am too a little bit, you know, not disconnected with myself, but I'm more likely to be dependent on other people's opinions Mm -hmm. and not, and I'll be dependent on other people and not just that, but I'm dependent for them to meet my emotional needs. Yeah. Which is sometimes good, but sometimes you don't want to be fully dependent on them because they also have their own lives. Yeah. They also have their own, monsters inside their heads or nightmares in their beds you know what i mean like yeah or or the other way around i i don't really know well i mean like going through the the drawings here that that like the what you're talking about there is actual there's a disorder for that it's called dependent personality disorder and Mm -hmm. that one it's described as uh it is personality disorder that is characterized by a per pervasive psychological dependence on other people this personality disorder is long-term condition in which people depend on others to meet their emotional and physical needs with only a minority achieving normal levels of independence and you know you it it is a weird balance uh i was gonna say uh us as human beings we as much as you want to be a loner and as much as you think you're you're a lone wolf no pun intended uh yeah pretty much uh you got to remember that human the human psyche looks for their tribe no matter like it does like the like uh i don't i don't know frank if you ever watched it but there's uh this movie i think it's from like the early 90s it's called slc punk and it's about this kid who tries to become an individual and he wants to be just an original person and this and that but the Mm. point of the movie in the end is that no matter what, you're not original. You're not your own man because somehow you follow a tribe. Like, I'm a metalhead. I love metal. So that's my tribe when it comes to music. Um, and those are people that I tend to gravitate to the most is people that I can find that common interest with. I mean, us yes. as vapors, that's where where a lot of us talk about that support system that is in vaping is that we are all a tribe and we all, whether we agree with each other or this or that, that's a whole different situation. But in the end it, we there are people that are going through the same thing we are going through trying to figure out what setup works for them what kind of thing will will help them get off of smokes uh, you know because uh, shit i remember when i first started vaping uh i didn't know about facebook groups i didn't know about things on youtube and to yep. me that and you and even then like in 2012 youtube vaping was very very small there was like not that big a group uh Instagram wasn't big yet until like building became a big thing. I know that that's kind of what exploded uh, vaping in Instagram. That more people were kind of more in tune with it because a lot of guys are just showing off pictures of builds and things like that. But it's the whole thing of like, hey, look at this new setup I got. And what do you think? And everybody's like, oh, that looks really cool. You know, you should, have you tried this thing out or, you know, what juices and that kind of situation just like motivates us to be together and talk to each other and trade ideas and things like that. And I feel that that's kind of that commonality is something that we look for in life as humans, you know? Yeah. And pretty much like me being, being a guy, I like that other people are dependent on me, that they show that they could depend on me because I am trust, 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 worthy yeah but i don't want them to be to a point that i have to meet all of their needs you know people like me people like me i'm usually like what you call it 
some people tease me like a daddy kind of thing, you know, daddy, like, you know, if they need something, they'll come to me kind of thing. Yeah. And I'd love that, honestly, but usually what I don't like about it being called like a daddy is when people are too dependent on you, sometimes what happens is you get burned out too. Yeah. Because not just that, people are dependent on you but you have like a certain burden on your shoulder and you have a certain crown you need to bear with yeah and some people and let's be honest about this some people cannot bear that crown that is entailed for them usually yeah because it's either not just too big but it's too heavy if that makes sense so for me like a lot lately I admit that I was kind of like dependent on other people for my emotional stuff because I was going through an emotional tough time, I'll be honest, and I'll, I'll apologize for that. Yeah. But most of the time, I felt that being part of a group called Discord and being part of the Vape Suit groups, the Go To Sterf Vape groups, and other Facebook groups helped me a lot to digest, hey, we're here for you. And they made me actually stand up on my own now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a perfect person, I'll be honest. I'm, I won't say I'm not struggling with it anymore, but they helped me, you know, they helped me be a better version of myself now. Yeah. So in turn, I'm, I could be a better version of myself in the future. And that's why if you at if you have me on Snapchat, which is again, you know, self promoing I am J O V E E H H H, you know, dude, I always do this good morning, good morning, good morning things. Like if you notice this, because of the simple reason that I know that I may not be the perfect person, but I could impart something to my followers. Yeah. And that I could do something even greater for my followers. And even if it's like a small group of people or friends, what matters the most is me having an impact on their lives. And it's not that I usually don't, I usually don't mind my condition, but as much as I could give to other people, because the Wave Suit group has been filling my you know, my, whatchamacallit, my overflowing water, I could I could now pass it to other people. Yeah. So that being said, it's not just, it's just sometimes we're worried about what we could help other people with, but sometimes all we need to do is empty our cups. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Bell, bell, bell. But yeah, speaking of which, it's because it's sort of like the closing time, right? So, Wolf Bite Appreciation Award before we forget it, okay? I want to acknowledge a certain person in the industry that does a lot, but is not recognized. So, one of the biggest things is moderation, right? And... We got to appreciate someone who moderates in our groups and helps us not just pull out the links, but looks out for all of us. I want to give the Wolf Bite Appreciation Award to Livia Lee because she's not just like a mom moderator, but she also give, she's also one of the pillars of support of the Vape Stew crew and this industry. He, she may not do like any advocacy shows or she may not do a lot of let's say for example being a social media present kind of thing on instagram but she yeah. supports us so one of the things is support yeah so yeah anything you want to promote buddy uh clownbabes.com go check us out for any uh big gear and things like that uh uh there's a lot of things that are going in and out of stock and hopefully uh, wait for the summer collection yeah dude uh yeah, dude. Rectum Rectum balls will be put up on the shop here pretty soon. Uh, I, 
Uh, right now, I'm having to keep up with. Like I was saying earlier, I am a I am a drop shipper, so a lot of it relies on my distros and what they have and what they don't have. And I yep. am seriously having to go through every list, like the Bigfoot kits. Uh, I have one of my distros that carries them that they have a very limited quantity. And talking to the Garrities last week, they were telling me that the Bigfoots are done. So anything that is still available on any shop is it. So if you guys are still looking for one, go go hit me up and I'll I'll try my best to hook you up. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I did I did not realize that that was happening. Uh, as far as I know, James and I Leo are probably moving on to their next project. I think I I'm still like not sure, but the orchid is theirs. It's uh kind of like a different manufacturing company, but, but it's, it's the same one. But it's there under right? their branch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that was a Wake Modco thing, and I still want to try the orchid. Uh, I'm same. Looking at that, and uh, I'm thinking about adding the uh, pug from Vaporgate. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about adding that guy on there. It's a very interesting little mod. It has like different USB for whatever type of charger you might have. They got you covered in all reality. But um, yeah, uh, I feel like I've been having some issues lately with uh, distribu- distributors and things like that. So uh, it's been an interesting time. Uh, what else? Yeah, Vaping with Yummies. Go check us out. And if you guys want to watch our silly faces and how we record the show and things like that, go check us out on my YouTube channel because I've been posting them. And I'll be honest, the last post I put five minutes, not even five minutes after posting it, I got a thumbs down. And I thought that was the hilarious, the most hilarious thing ever. Because <laughs> I was like, dude, did you even watch it that you gave me a thumbs down on that video? It Maybe was, not. I think it's the SpongeBob voices pissing them off. Yeah, there was one. There was two. But yeah, there was two. There so was two. yeah. And then Frank Wolf. Uh, Frank Wolf by on Instagram and Clown Vapes on Instagram as well. And Patreon Clown Vapes. Patreon.com slash Clown Vapes too. Go check that out. Support Clown, you know. And also, we're on Vape Radio every Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 9, or sorry, not 9, but like 12 noon Central, and Sundays also at 9 p.m. Central and 7 p.m. Pacific. I'm kind of like twisting the times right now but yeah also there's replays on clowns youtube channel and hopefully i get to upload the files on soundcloud too so yeah yeah that's all remember legends Vape on, Vape on friends we'll catch y'all next week <laughs>